Hey there, it's Seb. Let's have a look how the SIM management works and how you can do some of the changes yourself on the SIM uh, if you have some development skills and are able to touch a bit of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So we just got a new SIM here, we call it Areas. And let's customize a few things and see how that works. So first we'll go in Booking Sync into our uh, apps. So all the apps are here and we're gonna go in the website. So here I have already this website application loaded. Now what we want to do is to go into the templates. So this template is where this design management happen and where you can customize things. So as you see here, we have different sections. So we have the, the layout. So the main one is here, layout.liquid. This is the base used on every single page. And here we can see, uh, we can load it to, to see a bit how it's done. Here we have a lot of complex logic for SEO optimization to make sure we always use the best name possible for each page and description. Uh, and under this, we have the actual base of our HTML, including our assets. So stash sheets at the top, uh, JavaScript at the bottom, um, as well as our content for layout. This is going to be used to load the page specific content. And this page specific content is gonna be inside templates. Uh, here we have uh, eight pages. Uh, that can be used. So this is a specific template for each page. Um, as well, we can see here that we also include some partials here, layouts.menu, uh, underscore menu. We can have a look at it. That's what will define the markup for our menu. Um, as you see here, we, we're using liquids with this uh, curly brackets and um, percentage sign. Uh, so this is Liquid. You can check a bit more about Liquid on the documentation. Uh, this is on website.doc.bookingsync.com. Um, we see here, this is still a work in progress, but you have already a lot of details about all the different drops available. So that's the variables you can access, um, as well as the different filters and tags. We will go a bit further into this. Uh, that basically help you format this uh, data that you have from the drops into the formatting that you desire. So that can be really helpful uh, for dates um, and a lot of other things. So we'll go into this further. Um, so to go back here through our partials for the menu, we'll not deep dive into this too deep on this video. It's meant to be more of an introduction. But if you are familiar with the HTML, this should be pretty straightforward. Uh, There's just a bit of conditioning um, with this liquid markup to do what you want. So moving forward, here our, our page, Aelas, uh, we can see this markup. This is an index page. Um, so here we, we have it. Here we can see that it's pretty simple. We tell it to load this home slider. That's what we have, this background image that slides between the, the published uh, rentals. Uh, that's a choice we made in, in this snippet. Then we have a search bar and home categories. So as we see, we have this search bar here and we scroll down, we have our categories that are here. So feel free to go through it, look at how the code is done uh, and do some changes. Yeah, see how that behaves. Um, one thing to keep in mind, however, is all these layouts, templates, and snippets. When you do a change here, it's reflected right away. So if we were to add just for, for a test, we'll make a, we'll make a big header here. Um, let's actually use H2, H1 is already used. So let's not tap over that again. Um, we see that, okay, just saving it. If we reload our public site, this is already present. Um, so if you have a production site, you want to be really careful with this because that's what your users are going to see right away. Uh, so you might better work on a development site and then apply all your tests at once. 
or, or check with us so you can work on two different themes and, and migrate when it's ready. Uh, we can do a migration for you. Um, for now, I'm going to clean this and we're going to go about the other aspects, which is all about your assets. Uh, we see that we have JavaScripts using Kof Coffee. Here's a Coffee extension. So this is for CoffeeScript support. Um, as you see here, that allows us to require dependencies and as well to have a, a different syntax. So if you are familiar with CoffeeScript, uh, you are just right at home. If you prefer JavaScript, uh, nothing forces us to use CoffeeScript. You can just use plain JavaScript. This works just fine as well. Just make sure that the extension is only .js in this case. Um, now to go back, style sheets. We support also SAS or SCSS. So SCSS extension and .sas extensions are there. Uh, that will help you to pass variables, again, to load partials, all this, this markup. If you prefer CSS, same again, uh, just have a .css and that will work just fine. Um, and we have images at the bottom. So now let's have a quick look how to change some assets. Uh, say we want to change a few color. We, instead of this blue, we would rather have, uh, let's say, a pinky color, a bit reddish. Um, so if we go into variables, we structure this really close to Bootstrap. That's really famous nowadays, so we, we saw there's a good base, so it's easy for designers to, to go and improve from there. And then this color, this blue, we have it here as a brand primary color. So let me pick up this, this pinky color that I want to use. And as we are using SAS, we're going to be able to do things like darken uh, on things like this. So I know that I like this color, but I want it 5% darker. So you can do this right away directly from here. Um, so if we save, we can see that here we have, however, uh, a publish changes or preview site. What that means is that by default, your theme, your, your assets, uh, style sheets and JavaScripts didn't change for your production site. They are only available first onto a preview mode. So if we click on preview website, we're going to see this right away. Uh, as you see here, it has this debug equal one uh, parent. And so this allows you to test your JavaScript and style sheet on your production site, what is visible only to you or people having this, this debug equal one parameter. Everybody else is still using the old site. So as you see here, that did style our button. Uh, so this primary color is applied to different places on the seam. Uh, if we were to make a search here, uh, we're going to see how this works. So as we see, this has been applied in, in many different areas of our theme. Um, so it, it's a really quick way to, to personalize your, your color schema. Now let's go back and bring a little bit more of customization. So if you want to change your, your body background, um, let, let me pick a color. All right. Um, if you were to change a font, well, you can do that as well. Make sure that you, you link to that, uh, to that font so it's available. Um, but as you see, there is a lot of variables already defined here. And there's a one from Bootstrap plus some extension following the same markup. So if you already know some Bootstrap variables you want to change explicitly, well, you can just define them here if they are not there yet and override them. Again, you have full access to this style sheet. You're not forced to use Bootstrap. Uh, this time have it by default, but it's absolutely optional. So if we check here on the style sheet, we realize that, okay, we have loaded uh, Bourbon and Bootstrap. Uh, here, there is the whole Bootstrap included. Uh, I'm going to save the change, but you will see that we, we load just a subset of it for, for performance reason and make sure it's not too heavy. So checking in Bootstrap, you can see that, okay, some components are not present yet uh, as it's not needed on this design. Uh, again, let's change just uh, the change we made right now. Um, we can see that our background color is going to change. Here we are. 
so we apply this this nice gray um, that that we want here again so you see it's really easy to do that when you feel comfortable with it uh, you can just publish because if we were to see again this page without the, the debug params we, we can try it again uh, well first it's going to run faster because these assets when they're compiled they are all minified, gzip, served over CDN and optimized really to, to the maximum we can for you. When you're in debug, they are all separated. It's much easier to, to debug on, on your own hand. Um, so if we were to, to look at this again to, to see what I mean by that. Um, you see first it's, it's loaded to load, it's lower. But also if we look at the inspector, uh, let's say we want to inspect that button. Uh, if we check which file is doing it, here we can find that, okay, this is our application.css. Uh, if we were looking at some other changes, say, uh, this one. Actually, yeah, we have to click on it to see the comments uh, because they're already minified, but uh, due to SAS. But we can see here, this is coming from our underscore rentals.scss. If we go on publishing this theme and che checking the same once published, so let's do a publishing here. So that can take a few seconds. Again, we are just uh, compressing everything, deploying it to CDN, so that, that takes a little time. Um, okay, here we are, checking that same page without the debug mode. Now we see that if we inspect that button again, or actually the same element that we had before, we see that this application is minified. All our code is extremely simple and removing all the non-desired comments. So it's really good for performance, but for debugging it's um, pretty much impossible to know which file does what. So the debug mode is really useful to this. Uh, all right, so for CSS and um, stylesheet, that's pretty much it. JavaScript behaves the same way. Uh, just feel free to look through it. If you want to customize a few things, say on the search, uh, you want to change some behaviors. So we have uh, a lot of things already implemented for you, so you don't have to bother with it. Uh, but say right now, uh, we will see that this doesn't preload any images. Uh, so if I click on it, it's going to fade this image as I click. If you were to change this behavior and say you want to preload the first image right away, you can do that. Again, we pass through the preview state. So let's see it with the debug mode. Okay, so now that first image, as you see, it's much more flawless. We don't feel that we have any loading because the slideshow is always going to try to be one photo ahead of you. So if you go really fast, you're still gonna see a loading because it didn't load everything, it loads just one more. Um, that's just a tiny customization. Be careful when you do this change, obviously, because that might have impact on your user experience. If you were here to put 10, well, it would load a lot of photos up front, which is gonna be slow. If you're over mobile on a 3G network, it's gonna be also expensive for your users. So make sure to make smart choices there. But I think preloading one photo is perfectly fine and is actually the default now on the new iteration of this sim. Um, so again, when you're happy, just okay, save your changes, publish it, and you're good to go. So that's pretty much it for a small introduction. If you have questions about how these things are working or what is supported, we are here for this. Don't hesitate to look through the existing code to see how it works. Uh, for example, inside the rental, we can see that there is some markup also to load translations. All these translations are present in this translation tab. So you can go and customize this translation for your own website. This is website by website. So even if you have three websites, uh, you can have different translations everywhere. Um, and again, this is part of the drops 
and filters and tags that we have on this documentation, which is at website.docs.bookingsync.com. So again, if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact our support. Uh, we are here to help you manage these designs. Uh, so it's not like you are left on your own. So happy designing, enjoy.